Welcome back to the channel guys and in this episode we're going to explain everything got to do with byways especially for you beginners out there ready to go out on the four wheel drive tracks so let's get straight into it. So the point of this video is not to overload you with information or try and veer you off onto the wrong side. We're trying to arm you with as much information as we can to make your life a lot easier when you go out on the tracks and what to look out for. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the whole four-wheel drive industry and four-wheel driving is a quite in-depth um, topic. So you can go get really in-depth with loads of different things. Um, but for this particular video, we just wanted to concentrate on just getting the, the information on the signs, what to look out for and how to arm yourself with that information so you can enjoy your day on the tracks with your family and generally have a good time. So you're new to four wheel driving, the first thing you want to do is get your hands on an OS map. It is a great way of sharpening your navigation skills and not relying on technology. So get yourself something that is local to you or your county or wherever you're going to be going and just learn everything, go over the key, find out what everything means first and then there's a great way of transcribing all the, the information that you've learnt and putting on your map and just relying on that as a source of information for yourself and for the future. So I'm going to show you a couple of signboards that we have here local to our area which we're quite lucky we live on the easternmost boundary of Salisbury Plain so we have this whole playground to our advantage really so we come out here quite often we learn loads of things we explore quite a lot so we are quite used to the signboards out here so these particular ones is you've got loads of information right here on this post so you've got a permissive byway you've got a byway open to all traffic also known as a boat and then it's also donated over here with a small little arrow which is a public footpath so the permissive starting from the top the permissive byway is something um, that is owned by the landowner he or she can open and close that track if they so wish without any warning and they don't have to warn anybody but in this particular case Solzhou Plain this is owned by the MOD as long as you stick to these guidelines that they have over here so basically you may be stopped or diverted give way to military vehicles keep away from troops who are training so and they do uh, warn you says there may be sudden noises as well so don't be frightened in any way so it's more for your safety anything but those are the things to worry about permissive they can let you through here you're allowed to travel as long as you are courteous respectful of the environment uh, the next one is the, our most important one from a four-wheel driving point of view is the byway open to all traffic which is also known as a boat now this one is donated on most maps as a brown route or on a Wiltshire council map is, is donated as a brown route the permissive is red footpath I believe is purple and the bridleways are green so byways these are, these are the ones that we want to stick to those are the ones that we want to obviously worry about and take care of um, and then obviously the other ones is public footpath and bridleway cyclists etc so those are the great things to look out for um, we're going to show you loads around more around the area and a little bit of do's and don'ts in this area and what to do um, and what not to do when you go four-wheel driving now here's another good one before we move on to the next topic is these particular signs here. These are tumuli. Now for those of you who don't know, tumuli are basically um, historical grounds or mounds or burial grounds. They are protected so you shouldn't go near them, um, you shouldn't dig in these areas. Um, as they can see there, no digging. Obviously this one is a bit um, sun faded. But for you guys, these are really good um, reference points on your OS maps, especially for Souls we Plane really great way of navigating you can use the tumulis um, and a lot of the key features on in the area for navigation so those are top tips for you guys when you're coming down to Salisbury Plain another great way of getting information um, for your routes and finding out where the routes are um, instead of hearing me babbling on throughout this video is get yourself on the internet we all have access to the internet on our phones on our computers get yourself on your, your local council website and generally they should have an interactive map where you can have a look at all the byways that are open, closed, restricted, etc. So on my particular one, which is the Wilton Council, you just go on there and it has an interactive map. You just click on the link and it'll bring on a whole new map. 
Now this is totally interactive and you can see all the different, they've color coded all the tracks which is super handy. Uh, all the purple ones are all the public footpaths, the green ones are bridleways, the brown ones are the uh, byways open to all traffic, and the red ones are restricted or permissive byways. Now a good thing about having access to a map like this, you can turn off all the particular types of uh, different types of routes. So we just click on public rights of way and we're not interested in footpaths or bridleways. So you just click that off and now it leaves you a map of the area of basically from Swindon all the way down beyond Salisbury. And it just shows you the, the entirety of the area full of tracks everywhere, which is fantastic. So now this is, it really helps you planning your tracks and plans your trips out on Salisbury Plain. So um, if you go out there, it'll at least tell you which ones are open, which ones are closed, restricted. It really, really helps, especially before you get out on the ground, which is quite cool. Um, another thing you can do with this, you can actually print these off, take a screen grab, print them off as they are with the different colors, and then you can basically transcribe the information from here onto a OS map if you have access to it, or you can just basically use this if you know how to navigate using one of these. It's pretty simple. A good thing to have as well is the green laning good practice guide uh, for Salisbury Plain. It just tells you the do's and don'ts, kind of what we went through today, but at a more sort of definitive area, it gives you loads of um, information from telephone numbers, you can call and ring ahead if there's any issues or if you're unsure about anything. Um, and then lastly is the uh, Solar Plain Military Lands Bylaws, which it seems a bit over the top, but it does give you an, an insight of what to expect when you come out here at Solar Plain and what you need to be careful of. And it makes things, if you just skim over this, it'll give you an idea what you do need to do and you obviously stay away from. So, which we've, I think we've covered most of the stuff in the video. But that's something, if you want to arm yourself, is definitely good to have. So that's loads of information right there along with everything else. So it's great to get on the internet, plan your trip, especially with the, the byways, and get all the information you need. So here's a perfect example for you guys, obstacles. Now this is a four-wheel drive owner. You'll come across these all the time. And these are the things that really make us happy, makes us, you know, our heart pumping. And this is what we want when we go out on adventures. You want stuff that we're going to challenge us. This particular one is quite a deep water crossing. It can get very, very deep in certain areas. The water can get up to this level, so you can see how deep that is, almost up to my windows. So in these particular areas, you do tend to have uh, bypassing tracks, which is great. So basically it helps new four-wheel drive owners who, who, have, who don't have vehicles as capable as others. So you can bypass these particular types of obstacles if you need to. So, however, in turn, this area, because the amount of rainfall we've had over the past few months and the amount of traffic this area has had, it's basically turned this bypassing track into um, an obstacle itself, which is kind of frustrating because it's been frustrating for everybody because people with um, low, well, not as capable vehicles can't really pass through. It makes it very, very difficult for you and you can you can see what happens now it creates a knock-on effect people start looking for easier tracks to get through and the the tracks just get wider and wider and wider and that obviously harms the environment starts destroying the tracks and for four-wheel drive owners this it, it's a very difficult situation for us to try and not explain this to the council but try and protect this type of area so for you guys new four-wheel drive owners the, the best thing you can do is if you can't get past an obstacle look for an alternative route around and try and maintain the area that obviously um, is right here next to the tracks we don't want you destroying the tracks if you can't get through don't attempt it so the last thing we need to do is destroy the area we want to maintain this area for generations to come so everybody can enjoy this area um, so that's the top tip for you guys i mean you can see now chicken track from obviously my vehicle pretty simple to get through that one there is pretty dry right now so we're quite lucky and then obviously we've got another uh, track on the other side there so um, for you guys obstacles are always a good thing for four-wheel drive owners but please stick to the track as much as you can so a great way of enjoying the outdoors is being able to stop on the side of the road all the tracks and enjoying a picnic or a spot of lunch with the kids enjoying the great outdoors but the key point to note, especially with these tracks and Solzu Plain, is you can't veer off more than 15 yards away from the track. Um, so you want to look for an area that is obviously not 
destroyed it's been used before so you can stop on the side of the track make sure that the track is still open for other traffic to pass through and another key um, point to note especially with areas such as Soldier Plain and a lot of areas around the country there may be really inviting uh, woodland that you'd like to go and explore you can mostly do that on foot unfortunately you cannot take your vehicle into the plantations here on Soldier Plain and I'm sure that is a lot of areas across the country so be very very careful on where you take your vehicle point is stick to the tracks as much as you can or not more than 15 yards so here's a, another little sign that I want to show you guys this is more predominantly you find these on Solzy Plain there might be areas across the UK that you find these uh, depends on the amount of military presence you might have is the white and red sign just to my left which is a big warning sign it's a byway sign but it's subject to the flag so if you look around in the areas just obviously far off to my left hand side there is a flag pole up there uh, if there is a red flag flying mostly most people know that it, it is a firing range which is active so just be aware that the area will have some bullets flying over it so just keep your head down I'm only kidding um, so just be very mindful of that so there is red gates there are signs there's flashing like there's loads of things to look out for so generally speaking especially with the permissive byways they will have those restrictions in place so just be mindful that's a definitely one of the things to keep our uh, your eye on hey if you like the video smash the thumbs up button if you haven't already done so consider subscribing and we will see you in the next one